Hello and welcome. This is part two of Conway's Game of Life. And I mentioned that I will expand the functionality to make it look a little bit prettier and also be kind of useful. So it's not only an evolving grid from a static point. So let's uh, have a look first on what we left off. This is what you already got from the first part. And yeah, also those files not worth mentioning. And now we will look at the new approach. So basically let's start with the, with the skeleton. So on the right side, you will see uh, the final uh, result. I hosted it on one of my servers. And what I did, I split up everything into four sections. And basically we have a top, nothing special. There is a title and the info text inside. Then the second one is for the controls. There you can restart the game, pause the game, skip to the next generation, increase the size of the game, basically increase the size of the world. Then also increase or decrease the generations per second. So it runs slower or faster. You will also see some information about the generation, population, how many are retired, uh, retired is a new state in the game, and also if it's paused or not, <clears throat> then yeah, let's, let's start it and you can see what will happen. I hope it will work. <laughs> yeah, it's working. So this is what you get and we can pause it for a moment. We can then draw inside of it, go to the next generation if you want, or even restart it. You can create a random world or create an empty world doesn't matter here you can then <laughs> build your glider let it run forever looks funny on the edges yeah that's that's what it is so uh yeah it's simple html nothing special some buttons and i will refer to them in the javascript where the logic and all the important stuff happens also i expanded the style yeah um that it's looking like the right side you will get everything from my gitlab where part one also is restored just check out the main branch yeah i called it main <laughs> so um, and also what i did i got rid of the p5 game engine i was talking about this and yeah it's it seems to be stupid what I was to try. Basically, I was uh, calculating the cell I'm interested in based on the position where I clicked and everything got worse when I started to try to make it look uh, good and work on different ratios. So I got rid of it and replaced it, but we'll talk about it later. Yeah, as you can see, there are plenty of new files and we will talk about them when they come. Um, what do we have here? Yeah, this is the script JS. This is the file we started or left off, and I gave it some extra variables. So for the stuff I need, <clears throat> it uh, has to know. I'm wondering why the game container is still here. Maybe I will put it somewhere else, but it doesn't matter. It's yeah, <laughs> one big chunk of code in the end. So okay, what do we do? We reload all the files in the HTML and then when we got ready, this is the last one, we uh, initialize the game. What do we do? Still the same like in part one, we try to get some information about how many columns and rows we need to create a world. We do this the same way by taking the width and the height and dividing it by the resolution. The grid is a new function. Now uh, I call it make2d grid. Uh, make to the array this time so uh, it happens in the game logic yeah here and the main change is that we don't give it a value between one or zero or not between exactly one or zero to represent its state now we um, say hey you're a cell now it's a new class and yeah <clears throat> what it does we come to the cell later then let's go back to the script 
we also have the option to make a dead array. That's what you saw here when I click on the right and then create empty world. This is the dead array. So what I do, I spawn every cell dead. The renderer. What does the renderer do? The renderer is um, one big function, nothing more. And the function is called render. And what I do, I render, render everything in the game container. So those are diffs. We can see them here. Let's go here, game container. This is the content. And how do we do this? So first, every frame I want to render, I clear the whole container. And then I need to calculate the color. The color gets calculated in the game logic. <coughs> what I do, I check if the cell is alive. If not, it gets this gray black. Then I look if it's just revived. And if it's just revived, it gets a light blue. If nothing of this happened, I calculate the color. So I take the RGB values and I split them into separate values and say my cell age times a factor is the color value for R, G and B. And then I return the value. And yeah, this is, if cell is retired, I need the retired counter to stay update. So. I will talk about this later when we come to the, I get, I guess it's the UI. But we will see. So, <laughs> actually now we are getting to it. So update game state UI. The game state, I call it, is how many generations you have, what populations, and if you are retired. And this takes place in the UI. When I run this function, I run three different functions and those are accountable to update the game state. Next we come to the game loop. This is where the game is running. So there's just an, a while loop that is running <laughs> and inside we check if our game is running or not. If it's not running, so we skip here and this is when you start the game is paused so we are now here and we are only running through the renderer and update the game state ui and there's nothing to update or it is updating but with the same value so there's nothing to see for us if we start a game we set this value to is running or we also could go to the next generation and then this value gets plus one, I guess, or basically one, I don't know which way I do. And then um, it will run, run the game logic. The game logic and game log logic is this big function to game logic. What we do, we create a new array. I could make this dead, this would be easier. Mm, by this I mean, it require less uh, calculation by the machine. <clears throat> because I don't flip a coin, I say, you got this value. Then we check in which cell we are, like we did in the previous one. We count the neighbors, like in the previous one, expect one change. We are not dealing with a number, we are dealing with a Boolean. So we have to check for that Boolean and return one or zero and add this to our sum. So this is, if the cell is alive, we will add one, otherwise we will add zero. And the same, but the opposite way. We also take care if we got just revived, because then we want to take the blue color, remove it and make it kind of yellow green. So based on the calculation, I could calculate the color, but let's talk about what happens if the cell isn't alive. 
and there are three neighbors. Quite the same. We talked about this in the first part. The difference is now we call a function. It's called revive. And in this function, we change the status of the cell, tell them it's alive, set the age to zero, so it's a newborn, set the revive counter to plus one, and say, yeah, the cell got just revived. We also have the function die and the say is alive is zero. And I shouldn't say zero, I should say false, but this is okay and this will work anyways, because this is JavaScript and you can be really dumb and it will work. Like this example. Um, again, all the same logic, expect that we increment the age. The current population is what we count to be alive. We always set this value to zero. We then check if we have the gen by step greater than zero because we want to take care that every time we click to the next step button, it should do one step and it does this by comparing it if it's bigger than zero. And if it is the case, it will do the logic and we need to deal with it. So we need to bring it back to zero. If this is done, we can then pause the game and return the function and nothing more was done. Here we are checking if our current population equals the retirement uh, uh, counter. And by this I check for two things and the same. First, I have a finite point of a stable function or a stable population. I can then determine it, it and I also can check <laughs> if there is no population at all. It works for both. And then I can do the logic. I can show the pop-up and how do I do this in the HTML. There is simply a pop-up and I give it a display none if not shown and just swap it out and also give it some values like the title and the information and give it the two buttons here with their functions so we can get this one instead of this one because this one will get shown when we play the game and this is shown when you click on the button. So I thought I would like to have ways where I can spawn my pop-up and yeah, give it the values I need and also pass some elements through it with some functionality. Works quite well. In the end, we will make the dead grid, show pause and return. If this isn't happen, we take our new calculated generation and make it our current generation, increment the generation counter. And back here in the script file, we are in the game logic, do the render, update the game state, and this is done. Now let's talk a little bit more about what we are left of. <coughs> the game logic. We didn't talk about some functions. Yeah, there is a function we didn't talk about. Reset world is a function we call to set the game back to a state we want. Basically, this is a random state and this is an empty world state. On init, if I pass the value true, it means there is a dead population to be generated and it does this for me. Update GPS, update GPS stays for update generations per second. And here I pass the value on change for my top slider. And then you can adjust the generations per second. The last one of the functions that are new is the rescale world. And the rescale world function takes care that you can do something like this. Uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's create a random world. And it does this by taking an account the size of each cell. You want to have it its a pixel size and then comparing it if it's in a range we want it to have. I will come to this 
range back later. And here we calculate the new columns and rows, make the new array and give it back and also set the inner HTML of this topper label of the range slider. Why are we talking about four here? This is a good jump to the render again. In the render function, we draw every element. We give it a border and we calculate its width. And when you spawn a bunch of elements inside some random div, you get a long list, nothing more, a long list. This needs to be styled with display flex and also flex wrap to work. And then the browser does all the work for us. We just pass some handy uh, informations to it. So how much percent of the grid gets occupied by each cell and also how big the border is. And now if you look at the screen and add those two, you will get four. And this is not what you think. It's not the same four, but it's close to it. We have on the left side two, uh, one and on the right side one. And this means that if we go smaller than the four pixels for the cell size, we will have only borders. So this one pixel, it, it, it looks crazy. It, 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 it's not fun. So I said, okay, this is the value, deal with it. And also it does some checks. It checks if we are a cell on the edge of our grid because it looks very ugly if there is a um, straight edged grid or straight edged square inside a rounded bordered square. It, it looks not good. So I had to swap it. <laughs> it's gone now. Okay. Now we maybe should talk a little bit about how the inputs work. You can see when I click here, it turns blue or it turns grayish based on its state. So we can bring a cell back alive or kill it. And how do we do this? We add an event listener to every cell and the cell will now have a click on cell function. And what does the click on cell function do? Let's talk about this here. The click on cell function basically takes the grid, looks for this cell in it, and then <laughs> says die or says alive. And in the end, we need to run the render function. That's it. There's nothing more behind it. So, now that we are talking, I got it here about what we can see. We have here the UI. It's nothing special. I take all my elements and most of them got an event listener that triggers some internal functions. Here maybe interesting is how I create a button. I give it a text. This is to create random world, for example and also give it a callback, nothing more. And this is how I create this behavior that we can just play and make our gliders. And let's make some chaos by turning them in a 90 degree angle. Ooh. Oh, the first is gone. That was fast. So that's it. I hope I didn't mess up too much and I didn't forget that much to mention, but I am pretty sure that I said everything. Talked about every function here talked about the cell, talked about how we render, talked about how the game is working, how the loop is done, talked about 
how a cell can be interact with and for example show pop-up I mentioned it between there is just the display type I change and it gets displayed it's always there I also should mention that I give it some values I set it to null and give it the new values I want but there is nothing special or related to the game maybe we can talk about the docker file I run this in a container because I'm lazy and I need something to show what I'm talking about um, yeah quite simple docker compose everything is it's wrong uh, no that's not wrong I have to uh, forget what I said and yeah that's it that's it easy clap nice project always wanted to do this learned a lot I hope you too have fun coding thanks for watching